Okay, so let's see uh, what's that procedure. Let's discuss every step. And I'm going to use the previous uh, example about the price structure that's offered by the supplier um, to explain for you uh, every step in the procedure. And this uh, procedure will be uh, the same that you're going to use whenever you face um, any problem where you, you, ha you know that you have a price discount. All right, so in this case, we start by finding the EOQ corresponding to the lowest price, which is the $13 here, okay? And uh, finding the EOQ is exactly as you learned before. EOQ is um, holding cost, so it's quantity over two plus uh, the ordering cost. You find that. And we do that corresponding to the lowest price which is 13 why i'm saying that do we have more than one eoq yes because remember the eoq is 2ds over h which is the carrying cost per unit per year and h is what when the uh, holding cost is given as a percentage remember what we did we multiply that by the unit cost so which means that if a company incurs a general investment cost of 15% or 20%, then it depends how much it's paying for the item, and uh, this will change the, the H, small H, which is the carrying cost. So yes, we will have different EOQs. That's why I'm adding now to our EOQ a subscript. So I'm calling it EOQ which is EOQ 13 in our case because 13 is the unit price. Now, if we find this EOQ to be greater than Q2, and this is Q2, by the way, we call these the breakpoints. So in this price structure, I have two breakpoints. The first one, Q1, is 500. Why? Because this is the uh, uh, limit between the two ranges. Okay, if I order below 500 I will pay $15 500 and above I will be paying $14 then I have another breakpoint which is Q2 which is 1000 again the same so if EOQ is greater than Q2 that's it we found the optimal quantity and we order that we don't have to uh, to continue we found our solution however if it was not let's say we did the calculation and found EOQ to be 930. This does not make us eligible for the price discount that the supplier is providing us, right? Because he's telling us that only if you order more than 1,000, you'll be paying $13. Okay, so if you found it to be 930, this is not a, we call, we said that this is not a feasible quantity. And we move on to step number three. Step number three will be to find EOQ corresponding to this $14, okay, C2 in our case. So, and again, we check its feasibility. It will be feasible if we found this quantity to be indeed be in, in this range of 500 to 999, okay? And if it is feasible, then we continue to step five. But also we may find that this is not feasible, meaning that it's not in this range, okay, which is uh, 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 set by our supplier. So in this case, we will move on to step number seven that we will um, come to later. But let's see now step five. What do we do? So we go to step five. If we found EOQ corresponding to this $14 to be feasible. So what do we do next? Shall we consider it as our optimal quantity, not so fast. What we have to do is we need to compare the total relevant cost of EOQC2 that we just found with the total relevant cost of Q2, which remember, this is our breakpoint quantity. So the logic behind this is that we found TRC corresponding to $14 to be a uh, to be um, within the range. So it's a good one. It's going to allow us to get this price discount. However, 
we will say that what if we go for exactly 1000 because if we order exactly 1000 yes this is not an EOQ but it makes us eligible for this price discount and we just compare and we compare the TRC meaning that we are including the purchase cost All right and of course the uh, quantity that has the lower cost this is our uh, this is our decision now let's see what step seven step seven says that we're going to use it if the EOQ corresponding to unit price 14 was found not to be feasible meaning that it's outside the range of 500 to 999 step 7 again we'll go to the last uh, range okay which is 1000 1 to 499 that has a price of 15 so it has also its own uh, small h the canon cost and we find the EOQ accordingly and that's why I'm calling it EOQ of C1 certainly if we found the EOQ corresponding to the two other ranges not to be feasible this will be feasible but also we don't uh, uh, jump to the conclusion that this is our quantity no we need to compare its TRC with TRC of Q1 and TRC of Q2 meaning TRC corresponding to 500 and TRC corresponding to 1000 and the one that give us the lowest cost this will be our optimal quantity okay so this is the procedure don't um, uh, uh, get nervous because uh, uh, it may look complicated but don't worry trust me when I'm going to show you how to implement this procedure through an example uh, you will see that it's a very very straightforward uh, just a quick note that this procedure in order to limit it to one slide I had to use the example where we have only two breakpoints but the same logic apply for no matter how many breakpoints quantities uh, we have okay so let's see now with an example how to implement uh, the procedure that we just learned okay which is uh, the EOQ is quantity discount model so here we have a company that uses 4000 uh, uh, switches a year so this is our uh, uh, annual demand 4000 okay here we go and they have uh, uh, they were offered the following price uh, structure if you they order anything below 500 they're going to pay 90 cents each uh, then 85 cents if the, the range is between 500 and 999 and anything be beyond 1000 they will be paying the least cost which is 80 cents now uh, their ordering cost is $13 and their carrying cost is 40%. Remember, in most cases, the carrying cost is given as a percentage. So let's summarize the price structure in the following table. Here we go. It's uh, the ranges are the same ranges that we used in the previous examples, but now the unit price are different. Uh, 90 cents means it's 0 0.9, 0 0.85 here and 0 0.8 here. Because we uh, know from the previous discussion that, or previous slide, that we need to find EOQ corresponding to every price, meaning that we need to find small h, right? h would be different now for every price because um, h is equal to i times c, where i is 40% and c is the unit price. So let's do that here. Here we go. So h will be 0 0.36 for uh, uh, the price of 0 0.9 it will be 0 0.34 if we are paying 0 0.85 and 0 0.32 if we are uh, paying 0 0.8 okay so according to the first step that we learned where do we start or you know what before starting let's uh, make sure that uh, you understand the components of uh, 
uh, this uh, price structure. Remember what did we call the thousand? This is the breakpoint quantity, and we have another breakpoint quantity which is 500. So this is our Q2 in the previous uh, description, and this is Q1. So we have two breakpoint quantity, and we start by finding E O Q corresponding of to the lowest price, which in our case it's 0.8. And that's why I'm giving again the subscript, okay, 0 0.8. You can see it here. I'm finding EOQ corresponding to 0 0.8. What do I mean by this? This 0 0.8 means that my holding cost is 0 0.32 as I um, calculated in the previous slide. Okay, and we use the normal EOQ uh, formula and we find it to be 866 units. All right. What does it mean? 866 units is below 1000, below my breakpoint quantity. So if I'm going to order 866, the supplier will tell me, come on, no, I cannot give you this price discount, 0 0.8, that I used to find this H and that was used to find the 866. So we simply say that this is not a feasible quantity. And we move on in the second, uh, according to the second step, we find EOQ corresponding to the next price, which is 0 0.85. Okay, and we find it to be equal to 840. 840 is within the range. It is between 500 and 999. So this is a feasible EOQ. But again, as we agreed before that, we don't jump to the conclusion that this is our optimal quantity. No, what we have to do, let's compare its total relevant cost. So this is the cost model that we have in the EOQ with quantity discount. And we compare it with the total relevant costs of ordering 1000, the break uh, point quantity. So TRC of um, corresponding um, to 840, here we go, it's Again, the first component is the holding cost, so it's Q over 2, 840 over 2 times H. And here you have to be careful because we're going to uh, calculate different costs where H will be different. Make sure that you are using the right H for the right Q. Okay, plus this is our ordering cost plus the purchase cost, which will make the most of our cost, you see. Here we have 143, 143 for the holding and ordering, and these should be equal, remember, because this is an EOQ. And we compare that to 3,400, which comes from the purchase cost. And the total will be 3,686. Let's see how much it costs us if we order 1,000. So when we order 1,000, Okay, again, we have a holding cost plus ordering cost plus the purchase cost. And now we multiply the demand by 0 0.8, while above we are multiplying it by 0 0.85. So you see here we are incurring an annual purchase cost of 3,200, 3,200, sorry, compared to 3,400. And that's what made this total cost then uh, uh, cheaper for us okay so you can see here that even though the uh, quantity of thousand is not an EOQ however we choose to go for that because this is the best quantity given this price structure that's offered to us by the supplier so I hope that uh, this example illustrates very well the application of the procedure that we have learned and you can see that it's really a very simple procedure.